one cast one fish and today we're out on the tidal Rappahannock River after smallmouth and largemouth bass. Since I'm going to be fishing a tidal river with lots of laydowns, rocks, stumps, stuff like that, um, my bait of choice is going to be a crayfish imitating crankbait, preferably something that's going to go for about 6 to 10 feet deep. I'm going to be concentrating on any type of rock, laydown, things like that that's going to take and probably be holding crayfish, which in turn Hopefully it will be holding some smallmouth bass or even a largemouth bass. If you look at a contour map of the river, you're going to notice that I'm trying to focus on areas where the shallows drop off into deeper water. And it's going to be on those contours that fish are holding before they push shallow to either spawn or feed. Boom! Got one! Just like that. That's a nice one. Hit that crankbait just like I was telling you. Bang! Very jumps. Nice looking fish, nice fish right there. The cool thing about this river is it could be a large mouth, it could be a small mouth. You never really know what you're gonna catch. And this one, oh, I think we got our first small mouth right here. That's a beautiful, beautiful looking bronze back right there. That's a beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at that right there, nice fish, nice, nice, nice fish. Look at that right there. First fish on the crankbait. Beautiful, beautiful smallmouth bass. That's what we're talking about. That's why crankbaits are deadly this time of year on a tidal river. This nice smallmouth right here is exactly the reason I said that fish hit as soon as I hit a piece of brush under the water. Boom, bounced right off of it. Next thing I know, slack line, big fish in the boat. All right, I'm going to show you right about where I caught that fish. You see that piece of brush right there? That piece of brush went underwater. There's some fallen trees right there. And as soon as I hit off of it, bam, that's when that smallie hit. This tide's going out. These bass are just now starting to feed. So I'm, again, you know, just crankbait, banging it off of timber, logs, brush, rocks, whatever I can find right where the shallow water drops back down into the channel into deeper water, right about on that contour line, that's where these fish are staging and holding at. When you're out here fishing these contours, we're fishing at 8, 10, 12, 15 feet of water right on the edge where it slopes down. It's important that you're using that crankbait that's going to get down there. A lot of times when you're around brush, logs, rocks, we have a tendency to choose a crankbait based on the fact that we don't want to lose it. So we don't want it diving too deep. Well, when you do that, you're not banging it off that structure. You're not getting it down far enough into the water column. And you're leaving a lot of fish in the water that you should be putting in the boat. Now, as you can see, we're coming back up into a nice log pile here. Nice lay down in the river. I'm fishing, this is about 12 feet of water right here. Like I said, we want to take that crankbait and I'm going to be banging it off. I'm not scared of losing this crankbait. I want it hitting every rock, every limb, everything in the water. There's a stick, stop, let it bounce off, float up a little bit. There's another branch, stop, bounce off, float up. And that's what you want to do, is when you dive that crankbait, when you hit that stump or that stick or that brush or that log, stop for a second, let it deflect off, float back up, and then continue your retrieve. And you're going to hang up a lot less. There's one, got another one. Oh, what do we got here this time? That was again, right on that crankbait. Oh, largemouth bass. Oh, yep, largemouth. Nice little largemouth bass right there on the crankbait. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I'm saying it is so important that if you're not freaking hitting that crankbait right off of that stuff, you're not catching fish. You're leaving so many fish in the water you should be putting in the boat. You know, this one hit just again. As soon as I came over that brush, as soon as I came over that brush on that lay down, bam, hit into it, stop for a second, let it float back up. As soon as I started to crank back down and reel again, there was that fish. And because I wasn't scared of the brush, banging that crankbait right into it, rewarded with a nice largemouth bass. Now, right about here is where we hooked that largemouth. And don't think there's not more here. So I'm going right back into that brush, right back into the thick of it with this crankbait. One important thing is when you're using the right size crankbait, you can feel the bottom as the nose of that crankbait bangs into it. You can tell if there's rock or brush or sticks or stump. 
you can feel all that because it transmits back to the rod. I'm still here on this contour. I'm trying to stay right here in this 12 foot line because that's where it drops off. If you look at the bank, I doubt you can see it because the water is kind of muddy, but just like five, 10 feet in front of me, I can see the sandy bottom with a little bit of rock and some lay downs. In the water where the boat is right now, I'm actually sitting in 12 feet of water. All right, so right here, I hit a little bit of a brush or a lay down or a tree or something. So I let that thing float up. No fish that time, but I'm gonna go right back to about the same spot, see if I can't get one to hit it this time. All right, so no takers that time. That's all right. All right, where this tree falls into the water, kind of going to be tough because those branches overhang, so it's a little difficult to get the crankbait up in there. But like I said, don't be scared. Try to pitch that crankbait around the edges. Get it banging off with some stuff and see if you can't pick up a fish. Now, if you look right there, that there is like the ideal type of place for the crankbait. When you see any type of lay down like that, that's sitting right off the contour line, that's like an ideal place where fish possibly could be hanging out. So you definitely want to take the time to hit that good. Don't just make one cast and move on. You know, make three or four. You never know when it bounces into it and floats back when that fish is going to hit it. But usually when you see something like that, normally when you see something like that, there's going to be something hanging out on that type of structure. Definitely always hit these type of things thoroughly. Make three, four, five, six, seven, eight casts, whatever it takes to make sure you work that piece of structure properly. Try out to the other side a little bit, a little different angle. Now, one thing I've done is floated a little bit past that structure that I was fishing just a few minutes ago, and I'm actually gonna hit it from a different angle. Since the tide is outgoing right now, I wanted to act like instead of a bait fish or a crayfish coming up, going against the tide, I'm gonna bring that crankbait back with the tide and see if I have any better luck. So I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing. I'm just reeling, and as soon as I feel that structure, I'm gonna stop, let it float up a little bit, and continue to crank it down. There one is. Got him. Oh, that feels like, that's a good fighter. Mm. Oh man, I think he, I don't know. I think he got me tangled up maybe. I can't tell what we got here. I think I might be tangled up, but I definitely got a fish on because I feel him shaking his head. I need to see if I can't get him out of this brush. Yeah, I definitely, definitely, I feel the fish there. He's got me wrapped around something. That's one of the things you got to watch for, but it's worth it every time. Got him. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. A little bit of work. There's a fish. Boom. Largemouth bass, just like that. Almost didn't get this guy. He didn't want to come up. Got me wrapped around a stick. Hey, that happens sometimes, but don't despair. You work it, you let them play a little bit, pull the other way. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get your fish. And another nice bass, largemouth, going into live well. I tell you, it's been an awesome day out here so far. No complaints whatsoever. That's three fish, two largemouth bass, one nice hefty smallmouth. That's not bad for as long as I've been out here. You know, this is the first time I've been on this river this year. So those fish are just getting heated up. Pretty soon it'll be time for everything to start moving up, spawning. This river's only gonna get better with time as spring comes. There's one, got him. There's another fish right there on that contour. Now this time there was no brush, but you know what? That fish was hanging right there on the contour and that's exactly where I expected him to be. A little bit of distance. That was right off when I started cranking down on that. That was basically at the end of the cast. This feels like it could be a pretty good fish right here. Let's see what we got. That's what I'm talking about. Another nice largemouth bash right there. Right on that crankbait. Oh, he wasn't hooked real well either, so glad we actually got that one in. All right, that's number four. Another nice chunky largemouth bass on the crankbait. 
All right, that's gonna do it for the day. I'm gonna get these fish back in the water, give them the proper release, get them revived so they can come back, spawn, get caught again, you know, those type of things, so other people can enjoy these fish at a later date. All right, we're gonna get down here in this live roll. We're gonna get these fish release, put them back into the water. Here we go. It's a nice smallmouth bass. Fish number one that we caught on our crankbait today. Headed back to the drink so you can grow bigger, stronger, spawn, have little babies, and be caught again, hopefully. Ah, he bit my finger. And away he goes. Fish number two. A nice largemouth bass, once again caught on our crankbait, back into the water you go. And in the water. Oh, feisty little guy, he didn't take long to revive. Back to the live well for number three. Bass number three, oh, fell to the crankbait again. We're gonna put him back in the water so he grows bigger or stronger, fights another day. he goes fish number four back in the water Grab uh, another finger biter and away he goes hey it's one cast one fish and that's going to do it for the day four fish total one small mouth three large mouth all on crawfish colored crankbait now, I hope that you take and use all the tips I gave you while I was fishing this crankbait today on the river. And as always, like, comment, share, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know down below, and we'll see you next time on the water.